Hi, and welcome back to the studio. Are you ready for another tutorial? Today, we're going to do some uh, fruit contour line um, sketches. So I think you'll really enjoy these. I think you're really gonna like this one. It's super simple, but it's a powerful, uh, it's a powerful tool. So let's dive in. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using um, this Faber-Castell art set. It's got a 2B, 4B, and 6B drawing pencil in it, as well as a nice um, eraser and a sharpener. You don't need to have three different types of pencils, but you can see they have different values. So for this, we're going to use three different values of pencil. I'm going to start with the lightest 2B. I'll leave my 4B and 6B off to the side. And the, the assignment or the prompt is to do contour drawing. And that means using contour lines. I might title this contour lines, which are lines that follow the contour or the shape of the object you're drawing. So I'm going to set the banana to the side here. And I'm going to start with a little very light sketch of the shape. Okay, I'll, I'll, I would normally draw this a little lighter, <clears throat> but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to um, sketch a little darker, but just keep that in mind if you're drawing along with me, not to draw as dark as I am as quickly as I am, because we want to start sort of light and tentatively so that we can make corrections. I'm already noticing that this is shorter than my actual banana. Um, I'm not going to worry about it for the purpose of this lesson, but I am also seeing, so now I'm going to think about the different planes, the different sides or edges of this object. So um, we have a little bulge at the top here. So I'm going to kind of show that it changes shape. And then down here, I'm not gonna worry about like the value, darks and lights. We're really not, that's not what this drawing is about. But when I get to this corner and it changes direction and goes out this way, there's a line right here. You know how bananas have edges, kind of like corners? There's one that starts right here. So I'm going to put that in here. And then that means this little part back, back here is, a, 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 this little part back here is its own section. And the same thing with the front. This stem has like a little edge right here on the right. Um, you have to really look for the shape and like where it's, that's not too noticeable, but I can see the values changing here. So that gives an indication that we probably have a different edge. And then I'm going to try to draw this line right here, this edge. And it, when it gets to about here, it curves in. Um, notice that I kind of try to minimize scritchy scratchy they call it like chicken scratch and I try to just have a bit more confidence and a bit more longer lines and you'll notice in order to facilitate longer lines I'll move my hand around the page now I can already see that this isn't quite the right shape so no harm done here I'm going to erase that and I'm going to try to just correct that a little bit And I wanna show a bit of direction change right here where the banana kinda of grows out. And then here at the edge, at the back, let me just erase a little bit, clean this up. I can see a tiny bit of this back edge, this one back here, it's kind of coming around and it's very subtle, right? There's not, it's, it's not a lot showing, it's just a sliver. 
and then this side I'm moving my body around the page I could also be moving my page around um, but I don't want to do that just for the sake of the tutorial so when I get to about here I notice that the direction changes and it curves sort of in a little so I want to do that and then when it gets to here there's like an end piece so I just added that on it looks a bit funky so I'm gonna make it a bit flatter that's really what it looks like though. so I'm gonna add a bit more detail up here because I want to not take out anything that makes it more lifelike okay now contour we've got some basic outline happening this is contour it's showing the outline of the shapes but now I want to sort of wrap, like imagine you're wrapping this object in striped fabric. So um, I might start this way and our lines are sort of parallel. Parallel lines, like when we're drawing, um, it's how perspective works, when we draw parallel lines in a drawing and they fade towards a horizon these we understand are parallel and if they're getting closer together and smaller back here it means oh well obviously they're getting farther back in space well we can use parallel lines for the same purpose in these drawings and basically show like spread those parallel lines around i'll show you in a second they don't stay perfectly parallel they kind of warp so first things first i'm going to zoom in so you can see this i'm taking each one of these stripes and when it hits that corner I'm changing its direction so it kind of looks like a box it's okay if this isn't a perfectly realistic drawing but then I'm going to and you I would stay light if I were you um, I'm just doing this dark so that you can see but anytime we hit a corner I'm going to wrap that I'm going to change the direction of that line to show hey this is this is changed direction And then we're just going to keep going um, it's okay to spread your lines out you don't have to make them really close together when you make lines closer together it sort of implies like a divot or a tighter area almost like a topographical map you can kind of think of this as a topographical map So I'm, I'm even curving it a little. You, you could keep them perfectly straight, but um, I th actually think it's helping a little to have them curved. And no, they're not perfectly equally spaced. They're kind of funky, but this is a drawing. It's meant to get us really thinking about form and three dimension. I did a mistake here in the corner. I made that line kind of go a different direction it should be wrapping this way that's all we're going to do for this if you wanted to add in a little shadow for interest you could but it's not necessary i just think it kind of looks cool i moved this over so i could see what the shape of the shadow was doing and instead of using the tip of my pencil i'm going to use the side i'm glad i added a shadow because it made me realize there was something else i needed to tell you um, you could leave this like this it's not a bad drawing but for our purposes we want to vary the line weight so with contour lines we kind of are working with parallel lines but we do want to vary the line weight and that means the thickness of the line but also the darkness so I'm gonna jump past the 4b right to the 6b and anywhere that I want to show a little bit maybe more value or I want to show weight 
um, often I find my students generally um, they make the outside a bit a bit darker oops <laughs> I broke the pencil lead so I was pressing too hard um, which has a really cool kind of graphic effect it's kind of neat to just um, play around with what you want to have a different line weight so we're doing a thicker line on the outside to outline the object and remember this is just one style of drawing I'm not saying hey take this lesson today and do this with all your drawings right you might have a completely different style I hope these tutorials just help you open your mind to some other ideas I think I'm going to do nice and soft and then dark as it curves around and then nice and light again. Just to kind of emphasize that curve. I've got a little smudge stick here, which can be kind of fun. I'm purposely being a little sloppy with this um, shadow just because it's fun. <laughs> and it's just a drawing. Like I want you to remember this is just your sketchbook. These are just exercises. To help you get going you could add shading if you wanted but that's really not the point of a um, contour line drawing but it looks pretty neat right so let's do one more shape together let's do the apple and start again with our light pencil and whenever you're drawing something round I just move my whole arm and very lightly press the pencil down. And once you get that circular motion, then you sort of put more weight on your pencil and because people just have trouble with circles, they think they, they need to do this and kind of hatch their way around. It's a lot less fluid. It's a lot less circular. This is just a nice cheat. Now I'm actually going <laughs> to alter it. I wanted to show you how I make circles, but this apple that I'm looking at really isn't circular. It's got nice rounded side here, but then at the top it kind of flattens out right here a little bit. Then it's a bit of an angle like this. It's round over here, kind of more flat coming down, and then definitely sort of flat on the bottom here on the side, bottom right hand side, it's just kind of cut off there. So not perfectly round. In fact, it looks a little geometric, a little angular, that's okay. And I'm gonna make a little, um, really light sort of landing of the stem in the center of the apple. And we've got a sticker over here that doesn't really matter, but why not add a little bit of interest? We're gonna, we're gonna keep the sticker on. So with an apple, one of the easiest things to do is start from the center. Let's first get our little stem here. Okay, got that lines going there. And then we've also got this like, this side is kind of rounded out. We can see the whole thing coming out, but the actual line is close to us and the stem's coming out of it. So that's the only real sharp kind of corner or edge we see. Then I'm going to kind of lightly follow the grain. Often apples have a grain and you can see the actual streakiness and that's very handy for this kind of drawing. And what's tricky about doing a circle is that at some point your curves are gonna to have to change, right? So think of like a pumpkin or maybe like a, think of a uh, beach ball or an orange that has sections. And at some point you're going to want the lines to change direction. So I'm going to just work my way from the outside in and notice that this shape is kind of rounder. That's okay. I've had st students do this where they come around and they're keeping everything perfectly parallel. And then they're like, I don't know what to do. And they do a straight line 
and then they start going out this way. And what that straight line does is it says this is flat and it's really certainly not flat. So we have to kind of keep this beach ball shape and avoid a straight line in the middle of a round object. So I'm actually truly looking at this apple right now and seeing if I can see the grain. Now notice on the back here, I think this is where the line turns from curving to the left to curving to the right. And it's not quite the same shape as this, but um, back here, that's the way it works. And there you have it. You have a bit of a geometric apple shape. And we can, I already sort of intuitively um, made this darker and thicker right here. So you might want to do the same. Whoops. These are new pencils. They were sharpened kind of aggressively and I'm not used to that so I broke them. <laughs> so I'm going to make the lines darker near the center of the core here and have them get fainter as they climb out and what that does is it kind of shows a bit of like tension and an area of tighter quarters So I'm not even going to touch the center here. I'm going to leave it nice and pale. And then I'm going to make a darker line around the outside. And I'm going to darken the edges. So I'm leaving the center um, a little bit lighter and I'm darkening the edges to kind of show shadow and to show that this is curving around an object. It helps make it look a bit more 3D. I'm even doing it back here. And then I'm going to do something interesting here with the... I'm glad I didn't throw that. Be careful with your pencils when they drop. The lead breaks. It's annoying. I'm going to do something a bit interesting when I get to the sticker. I'm going to change the direction of these lines. There's some folds in the sticker and I think it looks pretty cool to have, to kind of show, hey, this is something different here. It almost might appear like it had a bite or a dent in it. Um, but you'll notice that by keeping it light here, it's sort of looking almost like a highlight or something like that, and it just looks more three-dimensional. I hope that makes sense. So those are contour lines. The next lesson we will be diving into is actually cross contour. Um, I will be drawing, like going a little bit further into this lesson um, and giving you just one more example with this onion over on my Patreon. If that interests you, come join me over there for memberships as little as two, three dollars a month and a tutorial library that is exclusive to my members and it's the area where you can get feedback on your art so you can share any of the exercises you're doing and I will give you feedback and input on your art so that you can grow more confident in your drawing. So the next um, assignment that we will be getting into, I'll leave that there as a memory, a little note there, is um, cross contour, which is where we are not going to only worry about the parallel lines around something. We're going to also do perpendicular lines, okay? You might be able to just take that information and run with it without even getting to see the tutorial and you're welcome to try it out before the next tutorial gets posted. But um, it's bound to be super interesting because we're not just going to use fruit. This was sort of like get your feet wet, dip your toes in. Um, we're going to actually be doing some really complex um, objects with cross contour. And all that means is we're doing the contour lines and then we're adding a cross, li cross lines, crossways lines. So I hope that interests you. I hope this was an interesting um, new way to draw for you. I, it's deceivingly simple, but I would highly recommend 
doing a couple more objects. So at the very least, I'd like you to do two more um, pieces of fruit or vegetable. And it might help you if you're struggling with this to look for something that has sort of um, streaks to it or lines in the way it grew like this, you can see has all these lines already on the object. It's like a cheat, right? We can see the contour lines on this object and we can see how they curve around it. Um, other uh, things are squash, like an acorn squash or pumpkin and um, things like that are really uh, helpful if you're struggling with this exercise. It seems deceivingly simple. It is very useful and just uh, a great little exercise to get us seeing things and trying to make them appear three-dimensional without even shading. I know I shaded here, just ignore that. <laughs> but I want you to realize that just through thick and thin line and the direction of your line, you can make something appear three-dimensional. Good job, everybody. See you in the next lesson. I hope you'll join me for the next tutorial because I had a lot of fun with you today and we're just gonna keep on learning and keep this process steamrolling and keep the momentum up. And as always, please share your work with the hashtag Doddington Sketch Team. I really wanna see what you're making and reshare what you're doing. I would love to reshare it on my um, channels. Uh, so that would be really fun if you could do that. I hope you'll um, come back real soon for another tutorial here in the studio.